Hi, I'm Connor Houghton. This is lecture nine in the uh, probability and combinatorics section of Mathematics for Computer Science A. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the naive Bayes classifier. So the naive Bayes classifier is an approach to inference on data, uh, a type of machine learning algorithm. And machine learning algorithms, this one uh, is an example, uh, are often attempting to estimate probabilities. What you want to know is the probability that a picture has a certain label, uh, that the next word in the sentence is a particular word, and you're trying to estimate those probabilities in, in cases where it's impossible uh, or impractical to estimate them directly by counting on previous exemplars how often such and such a thing had happened. So in the case of uh, the naive base classifier, it's often introduced uh, by talking about spam filtering. Spam is hardly a problem anymore, and uh, these days it's quite easy to spot spam because uh, a few companies control uh, most, uh, a lot of the um, distribution of email. Well, everybody uses Gmail or uh, Outlook or whatever, and so those companies can see the uh, range of addresses that uh, emails have and use that, use the distribution patterns to, to spot what spam and what isn't. But uh, that's a quite a recent thing, and, and spam was a quite a big problem until very recently. Uh, and the way that people tried to uh, recognize spam was not by looking at the distribution patterns, because um, the email clients were much more fractured across uh, different clients and many people ran their own uh, local uh, web servers, uh, email servers, etc. Instead, what, what uh, spam filters tried to do was they tried to spot uh, spam based on the words in, in the email. And, you know, these days, again, when I, I was trying to find an example of a spam email uh, to show here, and when I looked, almost all the spam I get was people uh, telling me that I should publish in their academic journal. In the olden days, uh, spam used to be uh, largely around uh, selling you stuff, and probably uh, mostly around selling you stuff that uh, was either legal or semi-legal, such as study drugs, um, or, or uh, was a sort of embarrassing uh, products that were supposed to make sex better, etc. So uh, here's an example of some words that might occur in a spam email. So I've made a list here, uh, enlargement, XXX, cheapest, pharmaceuticals, satisfied, uh, leads. Obviously, if you were trying to build a spam filter, this list would be uh, huge. You'd also have to have some um, rules in because one way that emails, spam emails tried to get around spam filtering was to, for example, replace L's with ones, etc. But we imagine that we've made a big list of the words that are likely to occur in a, um, in a in a spam email. Now we can't just take the words on their own and say any any email with enlargement in it is spam. Somebody might legitimately be talking about enlargement because they were emailing uh, about photographs that they wanted enlarging, for example. Somebody might legitimately be talking about leads because you know they were from leads. So there are lots of legitimate uses of these suspect words, and what we want to spot is the combinations that are indicative of spam. And so uh, we'll imagine in encoding the, uh, the words in some sort of binary vector. So the little w here has ones when the word is present. So this one here shows that the, the, this email has enlargement in it. Uh, this email has XXX in it. It doesn't have cheapest pharmaceuticals to satisfied, but it does have, have leads. And the question is, is this, um, is this email containing these three words and not those other three words, not cheapest pharmaceuticals are satisfied, uh, an email that uh, is likely enough to be spam uh, for it to be put into the spam folder rather than the inbox. And so what you're going to do is you're going to work out the probability of spam given this characteristic of the email. So the email is characterized by uh, these three words and we're asking, uh, and, and the absence of the other three words, and we're asking is this likely to be spam, uh, uh, again given this characteristic, and so we'll have some sort of thresholds. We'll want to uh, estimate this probability then you'll have a threshold, a T, and if the probability is greater than the threshold, that it's spam, it will be put into your spam folder and, and won't show up in your inbox. That's the idea of, of a spam filter. So obviously to estimate um, these probabilities, well, we could do it by counting. We could get a big corpus of spam emails and you, you know, um, it doesn't happen so or we don't do it that much these days because we get so little spam. But in the old days, you know, when a quarter of your email or whatever would be spam, uh, you would go through at the start before uh, dealing with the, the, your proper emails and marking the ones that were, were spam. And of course, that would allow the uh, email companies, uh, people who wrote email clients, etc., to uh, gather a corpus of example spam emails, uh, a corpus that was involved with time as well. And so, what they might do is they might take all of these emails, uh, normal emails, and emails that you have 
help them by marking a spam, and they'd count the number of spam emails containing the words enlargement, XXX, and leads, and not the other three words, you know, uh, satisfied pharmaceuticals, etc. Uh, and they divide it by all the emails uh, that contain those three words and not the other three. So this is, this is the spam emails given the three words over all, all, all emails um, with the three words. And that will give you the, uh, an estimate of the uh, conditional probability, conditional probability of step spam given that characteristic of the, of the email. Now the problem there is that, uh, well, we're putting the um, emails into quite fine bins. With only six words, already there are uh, 64 possible Ws. Uh, and so we will have to calculate the amount of spam emails versus the amount of all emails uh, for 64 different category of email. Uh, that's, uh, that's still quite plausibly done. You can imagine it would be easy to collect a, a large enough collection of email to make that possible. But once that vector gets the sort of length it would have to be to include all the words, likely to be included in the spam email, it quickly becomes huge and it becomes impractical. Even with the vast corpus of spam emails or emails you might want to be able to collect, you wouldn't have enough to efficiently calculate uh, these probabilities. And so what do you do? Well, for a start, you can turn everything around uh, using, um, using Bayes. So this is Bayes' theorem. It says the probability that an email is spam given the characteristic W is the probability that it has the characteristic W given spam multiplied by the probability of spam divided by the probability of W. That's a start, but you know, probability of W given spam is no easier to estimate than the probability of spam given W um, straight off. And so what we do is uh, make an assumption. The assumption uh, isn't one uh, that, that holds. It's an assumption of conditional independence. It says that if something is spam, if an email is spam, um, then the uh, presence or absence of the spam words are all independent from each other. As I said, that's clearly um, uh, uh, clearly not true. You know, an email with enlargement in it is uh, is therefore more likely uh, to contain um, satisfied, for example. So. Um, it's, it's not the case that we have the property of conditional independence, but we're going to assume that it's approximately true. And it turns out that this assumption, well, it makes the whole process possible. It certainly uh, it avoids the um, computational problems, the, the um, data required, the, the data greediness problem associated with directly estimating all of the, the, the uh, conditional probabilities. Uh, at the same time, while the assumption um, isn't one that holds, it seems to hold well enough for it to often work quite effectively. And so what we're doing is we're assuming that the conditional probability uh, of um, the presence of this word, the presence of that word, the absence of that one, the absence of that one, the absence of that one, and the, the presence of this one, can be worked out as if these were conditionally independent. In other words, it's the multiple of the probability that this is one by the probability that this is one, given s, of course, by the probability this is zero, by the probability this is zero, by the probability this is zero, by the probability this is one. In other words, we're assuming that um, conditional independence, and then what we have to work out are, are these things here. So we need to work out the fraction of spam emails that contain uh, the, the word corresponding to one, which was enlargement, uh, and then the fraction of spam emails that contain uh, the word corresponding to two, which was XXX, multiplied by the, pro uh, the fraction of emails that don't contain the third word, which is cheapest, uh, and so on. And so uh, because we've made this conditional independence um, assumption, we're not having to count just the emails that contain uh, word one and contain word two and don't contain word three and don't contain word four and don't contain word five and contain word six, because the, that uh, is quite a small number. And obviously, the, the smaller your number, the noisier your estimate is going to be. Uh, instead, we're looking at the much larger number of emails that contain uh, word one, the large number of emails that contain, and the large number of spam emails that contain word two, etc. And so by the assumption, this is the naive part, by the naive assumption that the, of conditional independence among the uh, different attributes of, that might be indicative of spamness, uh, we have reduced the data problem to one where we've divided the data up into uh, two to the n bins where n are the number of attributes, six here, uh, and then we're using the number of emails in each of those bins to estimate probabilities, bearing in mind that if we have a lot of bins, then those numbers become very small and hence very noisy. Um, you know, 
you might have two emails, you might have four. That's a question of noise, but that doubles the probability, uh, as you can see. So uh, rather than doing that, we're, we're doing this other thing where uh, we're looking at the, uh, we're dividing the email into two bins in each case, emails with uh, enlargement and emails without. And we do the same thing for the numerator as well. So we also need to know, uh, there is a bracket missing there, we also need to know the probability the, of this attribute. That's of course occurs there. And so we also make an assumption uh, of independence. So we assume conditional independence, we also assume uh, uh, independence. If we assume conditionally independent uh, with all possible values of the condition, uh, then the assumption of independence follows from conditional independence. Let's not worry about that. At the moment we're assuming independence and so again we're assuming that the probability of getting an email with enlargement and xxx and not satisfied or whatever is the probability of, of, uh, of the, an email containing enlargement, the probability of it containing um, xxx, probably if it doesn't contain all the other words except for that it does contain leads. And so again the naive assumption is this assumption of independence and that allows us to calculate this thing here because these two uh, probabilities are now uh, estimatable from the data using counting on the data. And so the naive base estimator is the probability of spam given the word or the probability of some property given some attribute is the probability uh, of the property overall. That's just what fraction of emails are spam by uh, the product of all the individual probabilities under the uh, conditional independence assumption divided by uh, the product of all the probabilities for each of the attributes. That's the naive place classifier. As I said, it, uh, it is naive, but it seems often to work quite well and was certainly the way the spam filters uh, were written uh, un until um, maybe six or seven years ago.